When designing this website, I felt it was too simple, with nothing to attract users, because there was too much empty space in this banner area. At this point, I immediately came up with an idea to create lots of circles with random colors, sizes, and positions on the screen. And then when the user moves the mouse cursor, it creates lines connecting the cursor with nearby circles. Like guess Spear Man is shooting spider silk. Thanks to the use of Canvas and JavaScript, this effect will operate smoothly, and of course we can still manipulate the website content normally. If you find this video interesting and are interested in content related to web programming, please subscribe to the channel to continuously update interesting videos. Before our eyes is the original interface of the design. It's so monotonous, right? The part displayed on the screen is the website's banner content. And my goal is just to create a Spider-Man effect in this area. So in the HTML file, right inside the banner class, I created a bottom canvas element. This is a special element that can help us arbitrarily draw on it. I gave it an ID of dots canvas. Coming to CSS side, I need to declare size and position for this canvas element. My aim is that the canvas should cover the entire banner area. So make sure that if the banner element in your project does not have a position attribute, you will need to declare it until the declaration for the canvas element. We use the position absolute property to easily move its position. First, I'll give it a red background so we can see it easily. Thanks to the position property, we can easily move this element to a position zero pixels from the top of the banner. Zero pixels from left, width 100%, height 100%. After determining the location, I changed the background color to transparent so we can see the content behind. However, a serious error will occur here. We will no longer be able to manipulate the content because it is overridden by the canvas element. To fix this error, the pointer events none property must be added to the canvas so that users can ignore the canvas element to manipulate the content behind it. And that's all we need to do with HTML and CSS. The drawing part will be done with JavaScript. So now I will need to create an app.js file to write JavaScript content and import it at the end of the HTML file. JavaScript side. The first thing we need to do is declare the elements we need to use to manipulate. The first is the banner. Since banner is a class, I will use a query selector. Next comes the canvas. Use getElement by ID to call it. I will first define the first parameters. The width of the canvas is offset to it. Height of canvas is offset to it. We need to get these values so we can know the range we are allowed to draw. Create a variable CTX, which stands for context. Use get context to create a two-dimensional graphic space OXY so we can draw on it. At this time, the length of the OX axis is the canvas width and the length of the OI axis is the canvas height. I continue to create an array of dots to contain the information of the circles that will be displayed on the screen. And of course, it's initially empty. If you want to create 50 circles on the screen, do a loop 50 times. Each time we will generate random information for a circle. In order for a circle to be drawn, the system will ask us to provide some important information as follows. The first is the OX axis coordinates. Since I want it to be placed in a random position, I will generate a random number from zero to the maximum value of the OX axis. That is canvas width. As you can see, it has generated random numbers for the OX axis. Each circle has a different value. You can add floor to round these values to look better. Similarly, the OY axis for this circle will also be a random position from zero to the maximum value of the OY axis, which is the canvas height. The next information we need to provide is the size of the circle. I will generate a random magnitude between five and eight pixels. Finally, the color of the circle. If we only give one red color, it would be boring, wouldn't it? So here I create an array color containing the list of colors I want. If this array has five elements, then for color, I will randomly pick a color within this range by using the random function to create a random position. So we have enough information to draw a circle. 
So now I will create a drawing function to draw it. And it will be called as soon as the user loads the page to display what has been drawn on the screen. The current dots array already contains information of 50 circles. Now we just need to perform a loop to get the data of each circle and proceed to draw. Fill style is used to declare the color of the circle. It has been provided with information in the color key. Use begin path to start initializing the image. This image will have the following parameters. Position on the OX axis. Position on OY axis. Circle size. Zero is the default value to determine the first drawing angle. If a pi is a half circle, then pi multiplied by two will form a circle. And finally use fill function to fill it with color. So we have created 50 circles on the screen. Because it contains random values, every time the page refreshes the position of the circles will change. Next is the job of creating a line effect from the mouse cursor position to the nearby circles. So when the user moves the mouse over the banner area, I will execute a function. The first thing we need to do is determine the current cursor position within the scope of the banner element area. With the x-axis position will be equal to event page x, minus the left distance of the banner to the screen border. And the same calculation will happen with the OY axis. After we have obtained the coordinates of the current cursor, and also got the position information of the circles. So now we just need to use a loop to get a list of circles to check its distance. To calculate the distance between two points on OXY coordinates, we will rely on the following geometric mathematical formula. After obtaining this distance, then we will specify a specific condition to add a straight line. For example, I stipulate, only circles whose distance from the mouse cursor position is less than 300 pixels can be drawn diagonally. Now, I proceed to create a line as follows. The color of this line will be the same color as the circle being connected. Line thickness is one pixel. Proceed to draw. I create a line from the position of the circle to the current cursor position, then color the line. It worked. When I moved my mouse over the banner, nearby circles within 300 pixels created lines connecting to the cursor position. But the more I moved, the more lines appeared and covered all the content inside. That's because the old lines are not erased when the cursor moves away from that position. So now, when the mouse pointer moves, I will delete the old lines before drawing new lines using the clearect function. At this point, the original lines have been erased, but the original circles have also been erased, because clearect will clear everything in the range. So now I will call the draw dots function again. This is the original function used to draw a circle. Then new circles will be drawn again. It's simple, right? The current banner interface already looks beautiful. However, all problems do not stop here. When I move the mouse within the banner, it creates lines connecting the circles to the cursor. But when the mouse pointer leaves the banner, the last lines created while the pointer was in the banner will be retained on the screen. This is not correct. To fix this error, we just need to catch the event when the user moves the mouse out of the scope of the banner element. I will again have to use the clearect function to clear the entire canvas screen. Then run the draw dots function again to redraw the circles. So the problem has been solved. And that's the final content in Lundev's video of drawing and creating animation effects with cursors using canvas and JavaScript. Does everyone think it's good? Hope it will be useful to everyone.
If you find it interesting, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to support us and to continuously update new interesting videos about web programming. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment and we will listen and share with you. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video.